Hey guys, what's going on? I'm John Malecki, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made this sign completely from epoxy. I'm gonna show you how I made sheets in order to make the lettering. We're gonna do a little bit of the Shishigi Bond finish, and I'm gonna show you how I magnetize it so I can change the batteries and the light. Check it out. <laughs> So in the new shop, I share an office in the common space that's gonna be the showroom with the other business. And one thing that's been happening is people walking in and out while I'm recording the podcast. I wanna solve that problem by building an on-air sign. So instead of getting some acrylic and having that tinted and then cheating, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pour some resin, make sheets, cut the letters out of those, backlight it, get this thing on the wall with a switch. So the epoxy doesn't stick, I'm gonna put some packing tape down before I assemble them, and then I'll uh, fill the corners after I get the box. We're only pouring this stuff about a quarter inch thick, so it's not gonna be some crazy deep river table resin pour. So I'm removing the excess tape to get a nice tight seam here. You could actually use melamine for this and then not have to cover everything in tape. Um, typically the epoxy won't adhere to melamine. Um, you still need to seal all the corners though. So I cut the boxes big intentionally, so I could um, just cut them down. So I'm just actually gonna lay, yeah, we'll go this way, lay some tape in the corners here. And that should be good enough. We're not pouring a ton of epoxy and I don't expect to have a ton of uh, leaks for pressure. So we're using some total boat epoxy here. Um, and it's a two to one mixture. It's pretty cold in here, which sucks because it's gonna take forever for this stuff to pour. So instead of using the pumps, I'm just gonna straight up pour it out. Uh, it's a two to one ratio. We're gonna pour the white and red in separate and then use a CNC to make all the letters. So we let these dry overnight. Our panel should be good. Like I said, I made these about a half inch oversized. Let's get them out of the molds um, and then flatten them down. And we're gonna CNC out the parts for the sign letters. Pray for me. So I don't think this has gotten a full hardness. So what I might do is just leave it out of the mold. Yeah, that's definitely something you wanna take into consideration. I mean, it is negative three degrees here in Pittsburgh. And I know temperature affects curing of resin. So keep that in mind as you do something this awesome, if you do cho choose to. Hold me closer, tiny hammer. Such a good song. Great movie too. Let me know in the comments if you know what movie I'm talking about. But it is kind of cool to peel the epoxy away. Ah! 
bent lamb resin pours. While everyone else is pouring resin and worrying about if it's hard enough to keep tables stable, I'm over here making laffy taffy coffee tables. <laughs> and we can do the the pocket, the female pocket. And no, my pocket's not sexist. That's just how you say it. And then pour, make a very red resin and pour it in there and sand the whole thing down. I think that'd be, that might be our best bet. But this time we're gonna use an epoxy coloring that's a little bit more red. I'm gonna mock the box up um, so I can just make sure that the sign's gonna fit inside. And then we'll stand the sign off with some spacers instead of dadoing it in. That way if I ever need to replace it, I don't have to cut the whole damn thing apart. Because I already bored this hole out and I want to make it bigger, this won't find center and it'll just wobble around like that. So I'm just going to take this piece of scrap wood here, cut a hole in it, and use that as my template to hold that where I need Been messing with my drill. Use that to hold it in place. These are pretty cool. These are spring-loaded corner clamps. They're used for like trim carpentry. I use them a bunch. They do leave a little indent, but they spring things in nicely when you're making miters. I got a link down in the description if you guys are want to grab yourselves the same set. Pretty affordable too.
So we want the interior to be a little bit more reflective than just bare wood. So we're thinking we're gonna paint it white. So I'll tape this off, hit it with a little spray primer in there. So I installed this light, I cut it up, I wired it in, I wired in the pool, and the pool exploded because I didn't look at how many amps were coming from the light. So we're gonna go a different route with this. I went and got a <clears throat> wireless battery powered light. I'm gonna put that in the background, um, that way I can turn it on from wherever. And then we're gonna magnetize the front plate into the housing, and that should um, function for if I ever need to change those batteries out. Shut up, we're recording. Ooh, that's pretty. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This project was a complete experiment. It turned out really awesome and I'm super pumped about it. If you wanna see some more of my projects, I got another one queued up for you right here. I also wanna thank my sponsor for this build, Burns and Matic. I've got a link down in the description to the torches I was using in this build if you wanna check those out. And lastly, thank you guys one more time for tuning in. Go punch your next project in the face and I'll see you on the next video.